The Kentucky Small Business Development Center is a statewide, nationally accredited program that provides no-cost, confidential business coaching and training services. Whether you're just getting started or are ready to expand, we have the tools, resources, and expertise to help you succeed. We're part of a national network, America's SBDC, with over 1,000 centers across the nation. To learn more about how the Kentucky SBDC can serve you, please visit KentuckySBDC.com or email us at info at KentuckySBDC.com. You can also reach us by calling 888-414-7232. Thank you for joining today's webinar. The chat feature is available for you to ask questions and interact with today's speaker. Please take a moment to introduce yourself and where you are watching from today. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me again for another Wednesday webinar. I'm Dave Etkin. I'm the director here in the Louisville SBDC office. Uh, we're one of center, 17 centers all across uh, Kentucky. Um, again, if you look uh, to the right of your screen, you'll see the chat feature. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, just to make sure that you can hear me and uh, see everything, just go ahead and put your name and where you're joining us from um, there on the right and uh, say hello. So uh, yeah, there's Deshaun. See, uh, how you doing, Deshaun? Thanks for joining me. Come week after week. I really appreciate that. Uh, there's Phil from LaGrange. Uh, yeah, South Carolina. Larry, good to see you. Thanks for joining today. Um, you know, marketing your business is one of the top things you as an entrepreneur have to do. And I found an awesome guest to talk to us today, Chris Miller. He is the CEO of Prolific Digital. Uh, he's got a ton of experience. He, I've seen him do great things with small companies. And I thought if I can get this guy on, we'll have some great information. So Chris, welcome. How are you today? Thanks for joining. I think you're still on mute there, man. Oh, I am. I am. Thank there you, you so much. How, how's there it going? Thanks for thanks Excellent. for having me. Yeah. So, Chris, um, you know, we were talking about this presentation. You had uh, wanted to ask a really direct question in our marketing department when, would not let us ask that question. So <laughs> what is that question that we're going to talk about today? Well, uh, I, I think I think the question and sort of the topic when to dance around is is whether or not your marketing sucks. Yeah. And, and I think that, um, you know, that is a very polarizing sort of sort of blunt uh, statement or question. And uh, but I think that um, it, it is going to get the type of reaction from, from us all that I think that we need to spark the conversation we should have. Yeah, definitely. I've said that several times myself. So, <laughs> well, cool. Uh, would you like me to jump in? Let's do it. All right. I'm going to share my screen here. Give me just okay. a moment. Go right ahead. All right. So hopefully everyone can see my screen. Uh, so looks good. Looks good. All right. Great. So uh, yeah. So this presentation is labeled "Your Marketing Sucks." And by the way, uh, I'm I've got some major allergies here. So if I sound nasally or weird and I cough or something to that effect, I apologize. Um, so bear with me if you don't mind. Um, before we dive right in, just to introduce myself here, um, I'm a father, a husband, and a founder of a startup called Prolific Digital. Uh, so we're an advertising marketing agency, and I've worked in advertising, film, and tech industries for nearly two decades. So that's showing my age a little bit there. Uh, and I forgot to mention, we've got two cats. Definitely love our babies there. All right, so your marketing sucks, but that's rude, right? So hopefully uh, the questions will tell me more. And uh, so we'll start by asking ourselves some questions, and you're going to see that uh, this whole deck here is going to be uh, a lot of questions at the beginning of it, and then some talking points for us to sort of explore or, again, spark the conversation here. Okay, so first of all, um, and I'm assuming that a lot of you all are small businesses, um, does your brand have a voice? And I think that um, based on my experience, uh, not only starting businesses myself, but working with other small businesses, it's always sort of that operational model and where can I get leads and sales from that tends to uh, eat up a lot of our headspace uh, on a day to day. 
And we often forget to uh, tend to our own selves to figure out, you know, what does this look like and sound like to everyone else out there in the world? Because that is going to be extremely important of how you're perceived. And do you have a voice? What does that voice sound like? So people do crave authenticity, personality, and a connection that I think is more relevant today than it ever has been. And I think that it always has been a very important thing that people crave and want that authenticity and connection to a brand. Do you have a strategy? So you get what you give and most are looking for a deal. That is hinting towards, you know, okay, you, you've you got some pretty decorative things, uh, you know, in your brochure or maybe a site or maybe some ads or maybe a commercial, but how does it all hang together? Does it have a strategy? And sometimes your strategies can change per quarter, per month, per week sometimes, depending on what some of your objectives are. But do you have a strategy to get yourself from point A to point B? And, and does that strategy tell a promising story of what can you expect uh, at the end of that? Uh, what are your expectations? So you, you can't measure if you don't try it. And what that means is a lot of folks, uh, especially with smaller businesses, may have unrealistic expectations from advertising and marketing, uh, no matter how much they're spending there. Um, there's, there's a saying that I like to say is that, you know, you can't measure it if you don't try it. And a lot of times people try to beat down ideas or overanalyze them, be overly analytical. That's not to say that you shouldn't be asking questions. I definitely think that uh, you should challenge and seek to understand and and definitely be very engaged. It's a, it's a collaboration between you know you and an agency or or anyone that you might be working with. But you know the other the other side of that is you you've got to put it out there and you've got to try something because if you, if you don't and you get stuck in that over and and you know over analyzing phase, uh, you're going to often spend more resources, time, money on uh, beating down ideas instead of putting them out into the world. And once they're out in the world, you can then measure and see if that's working for you. Um, are you trying to game the system? So this is uh, this might strike some folks uh, a little little odd here, but um, you know, oftentimes as small businesses. You know, you have to really budget and and manage your your money very meticulously. And you often are looking for ways to uh, drive down cost wherever necessary, especially in expenses. And uh, you know, payroll will always be the the most uh, the biggest expense of the company, right? Um, and then I think a close second to that is your marketing and advertising. And I think that um, there's a misconception that um, well, you know, I can find cheap labor or I can outsource it offshore or even cheaply onshore. And it's just a bunch of, you know, little squares and ads, right? Or it's just a couple of words and, and maybe some images, right? That's not necessarily true. And you'll really get what you give. And, and I like to sort of think about it as how do you like to spend on yourself, right? So if you're, say, in the market for a new watch, uh, if you enjoy jewelry, are you going for the absolute cheapest piece of jewelry or are you going to purchase the cheapest watch or are you going to look for something middle of the row or something very high end? Again, depends on you personally as your budget and your taste. But I think that we can all agree, even when it comes to cars, you're going to get what you give. So definitely consider that whenever you're if you're unhappy with uh, the results of your marketing and advertising efforts, are you uh, spending enough there or are you partnered with the right individuals? So did you give it a chance? Um, this one is speaking more towards um, pivoting too, too hard and too often. Um, you know, we do live in a society where we want immediate results and, and immediate gratification. And I think that um, what's very important about ideas and getting them out to the world is that you have to give them a chance. 
Similar to plants, they require watering, they require sunlight, and without those things, they're not going to grow. And, and so if you're, you know, say, only giving something a couple of weeks and you're killing the idea and you're not giving it a chance to blossom, um, then you'll never know whether or not that's going to work or not. Okay, so <clears throat> that was a lot of questions on, you know, to, to spark um, some, some thoughts about, you know, what you may or may not be doing. And, and perhaps you're already thinking to yourself, you know, what, what is it that, that you could be doing differently? Or you might have self-identified that, you know, one of those areas are definitely areas that you could improve upon. It, let's go ahead and push this a little further and explore some ways that we can solve some of these problems. So a lot of this is revisiting rather in question form, statement form. So create first, measure later. Again, if you've got a great idea or you're partnering with an agency or partnering with other talent and they've got good ideas, let, let, them, let them happen and, and support those ideas and get them out there. Try something new, give ideas a chance and avoid overanalyzing. A lot of times we're living so close, uh, especially from you know, our own businesses on an operational standpoint, that we, um, we're, 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 we can't see the forest, right? And we're just staring at that one tree in front of us. I know we've all heard that analogy plenty of times. And you know, we'll, we'll be quick to just shoot down an idea. But there's a couple of things that happen with that. Number one, you're not doing yourself or your business any uh, any justice in, in trying to try new things and break into new markets and, and reach to new people. The other thing too, is that the people that you've surrounded yourself with that you're paying to do those, those tasks in the, the job, uh, you're, you're sort of demoralizing that, right? If you're, if you're not letting those ideas come out into the light, have fun, engage with your customers. So, um, if you're, you know, if, if, your business is, is in, whether it's retail, whether it's food service industry, um, whether it's a restaurant, um, even if your business is a warehouse and you're not public facing and, but you've definitely got, you know, 50 to hundred or more employees, uh, those are your customers too. All right. And, and that's part of, you know, internal culture there. Um, and then, so I think you could agree that every interaction matters. Um, so, Think about how you felt if you've went and, and gotten an oil change or whether you sat down and had a plate at a restaurant or whether you've went to an amusement park or a movie or whether you're shopping for a new pair of shoes. What was that experience like? Did someone greet you at the door or was it easy to find help whenever you were there trying to you know, make the purchase or had a question? Um, Think about that with your own business and how does that impact you all, whether you're client facing or whether you're not. Uh, every interaction matters. And I think, uh, I think it's worth obsessing over those experiences with every individual and every interaction because you're going to, again, and that's kind of the common thread here, you're going to get what you give, right? And I think if you're focusing on giving great experiences, you're going to receive great experiences in return. Uh, build a community. All right. So um, I think that this is often an overlooked thing and something that should and, and could inherently come out of great advertising and great marketing. Uh, but on, on the under the surface, uh, building a community is going to help you to net uh, promoters and influencers. Uh, that depends on your particular uh, business and your particular uh, brand that might not work necessarily for, again, a warehouse full of employees, but uh, perhaps it could, right? Because again, those warehouse full of employees uh, help to build the culture internally, which could help to reduce uh, any sort of turnover or other sort of expensive uh, HR onboarding, offboarding uh, expenses there. As well, but public facing, you know, again, if you're uh, a retail or if you're uh, selling products or services, uh, building a community will help to uh, gain uh, a net positive for you promoters and influencers who are then going to help uh, uh, recharge or energize and push your, your message even further out there. 
And then, of course, I think it's healthy uh, for all of us to to review every 30 days. So again, we've we're given ideas at least 30 days to sort of permeate and grow and and manifest itself into something uh, much bigger and reach wider audiences. Uh, and review it, review it every 30 days, see what's working, see what's not, and then figure out ways we can pivot in, in change a little bit or, or adapt a little bit. Uh, maybe the idea is working great. Let's, let's keep it running. Uh, maybe the idea is one second. Sorry, I told you I was going to cough. There we go. Uh, maybe the idea is working. Um, great. Keep it going. Maybe the idea is not working at all. And, you know, the messaging is just completely off. Well, then now's the opportunity to change it and scrap it and try something new. Or maybe you're seeing some engagement and you're seeing some success with whatever the idea is. Uh, and but maybe there's something you can do to tweak it and make it even better. So uh, that, that's the time to to uh, review. Uh, you know, I would say at minimum 30 days. All right, this is the last slide, and then we're going to open up to, to uh, questions. I intentionally wanted to keep this uh, short because uh, I think it's important to connect with others and, and create experiences and, and engage. So uh, the last slide is create experiences. Uh, we, we all want an experience, and we should be making more of them. And I think the, that's true, uh, not just in our professional lives, but in our personal lives, too. And I think it's something that we can all appreciate and, and something that we all definitely want more of and, and better experiences through every interaction. So that said, uh, Dave, I know uh, I, I, I was a fireball through a lot of that, um, but I'd definitely like to see if we have any questions here and if there's anything, uh, any, any conversations we can spark. Sure. Um... So, folks out there, if you just have any questions or comments, just put them in the chat there, and I'll uh, I'll toss them over to Chris so he can talk about them. But um, I was wondering if maybe you could talk a little bit about um, how you use influencers in and in building, you know, awareness in a tribe, basically. And because um, I think we are all of us are aware of influencers, and I, for one, have them. And I don't know if I would either have the courage or know how to contact them. It's almost like inviting Beyonce to the prom, you know, you're talking to somebody yeah. that you perceive, you know, kind of way up there above you. And why would they even engage with me? Yeah, that that's a, uh, it's a great question. Um, so there are a very wide array of, of influencer types, right? So like Beyonce is your, your A-list, you know, that's going to be very expensive and in a very tough sell to try to get her to, to sort of back or endorse something of yours. Um, you've got lots of, you know, social media influencers out there that I'm sure a, a lot of you are, are unaware of. I'm unaware of many of them. I just know those, the very few ones that I know. Um, and, and they range, you know, anywhere between, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 100,000, you know, followers. And, uh, and the ones that I know tell me about some of the, some of the deals or some of the propositions that, that that's being sent their way, um, you know, they'll often be direct messaged or a, an email gets sent to them and they say, Hey, um, you know, hi, my name's so-and-so this is my business. I would really like it if uh, you could uh, tweet something or post something on your social media. Um, you know, we've got a $3,000 budget for that, or we've got a $10,000 budget for that or, whatever the case might be, right? You build your case, you incentivize them and let them know that they're definitely going to be rewarded for their time and for their network. And, uh, and some will be happy to do it as long as it aligns with their values. And as long as it aligns with their audience, right? Like you, you wouldn't want to find, um, say a, a tech influencer that has 50,000 followers on Twitter. You wouldn't want them to uh, approach them uh, if you run a massage parlor and say, Hey, you know, can you push out, you know, some of my content, you know, for five grand, um, wouldn't, you wouldn't get a lot of return on that. And the influencer, um, probably wouldn't want to work with you anyway, because it doesn't really align with their audience. Um, 
how do you connect, you know, with, with an influencer or, uh, you know, a promoter? Um, well, there's one of two ways, either you could do it yourself, uh, or in, in, you know, you would just literally have to put in the, that hard work to, you know, tap into those networks, know where to look and then engage with that individual and keep in mind too, that, that, in, you know, these individuals don't know you from Adam, right? So, you know, you're coming in sideways saying, hi, I'm so-and-so. And they're just like, okay, yeah, so-and-so like you're one of a hundred in my inbox right now. Um, so you could, you could do it that way, but it takes months of engaging and having meaningful, meaningful interactions with them. Or you can partner with an agency that has a network of influencers or already has those types of relationships. And through that way, you can, uh, you can uh, tap into an influencer's network. Okay. Is that something that you guys do? It's something that we do. Um, so, you know, we, we do have uh, a small network of influencers um, that are in some niche areas, but we also are always looking to network and, and find more individuals as well. So we'll, we can do that outreach. Okay. So Candace says, I often use what I call micro influencers, people with 10,000 plus followers and good engagement. These folks often don't need much more than free products. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in, in, was it Candace? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, uh, good, good call out Candace. Um, in that case, I, I think that those are the type of relationships that if you will put in the work and you want to establish that relationship and do the outreach, you can often say, Hey, you know, we'll, we'll give you a you know, free product for six months or however long, wh whatever you want to negotiate with the, those individuals. Uh, mm -hmm. some will definitely uh, bite on that. Mm hmm so it almost sounds like the the Wild West, Chris. You just make a pitch, and if nothing happens, then you sweeten the pot a little bit, or and keep going back. Or how would you do that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, and again, it, it comes down to relationship, right? Um, mm -hmm. it, it comes down to engagement. I, I will tell you from experience. It, it took me six months every day investing several hours of my time in growing audience on Twitter and engaging and connecting. And that literally meant it's like the equivalent of in real life of us walking into the exposition center and literally spending three hours every day for the next six months, shaking everyone's hand. And then every day coming back and greeting them with coffee and constantly engaging with them. Right. They, the more that your avatar shows up, the more that your profile image surfaces, the more that your name is circulated, the more credibility and the higher sort of your credit score goes, right? And mm -hmm. then so people, when they see you, they're gonna go, oh yeah, like I, I wanna interact with that person because I understand who they are. I, I know their personality, that they, their values align with mine, right? That mm -hmm. takes time. Um, if, you know, if you come in cold, and I think that we all know what cold calling and cold emails are, right? Yeah. And this is, this is the same when it comes to the influencer realm. If you come in cold, you're often not really going to get a response. You're, you're right. lucky to get a response. So you could sweeten the deal. You, you could aggressively you know, raise the stakes and, and try to uh, encourage them to, to want to engage. But, um, but yeah. Interesting. Let's see. Um, so Loris asks, how effectively do you believe TikTok and Instagram can be for small local businesses? Uh, incredibly effective. Um, but, but I got always a bit, right? <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm going to go on a bit of a story or uh, a story time here. So, um, I, I cannot tell you in my career, how many times I've worked with businesses, small and, and large, and um, someone along the line sold them on, well, you need a blog and you need to be putting things on your blog, you know, often. And that's going to help you with SEO and that's going to help you in Rise and Search and all that good stuff. And they're like, okay, great. And then they launch with a blog. And then we check in a year later and they didn't write any blog posts. Mm -hmm. and, and the problem with that is that, um, you know, the, the idea and, and the strategy is there, but the commitment or the resources are not. And, um, oops, sorry, someone buzzing in. 
but the but the uh, commitment of resources are not. And that's because as small businesses, we're extremely scra scrappy and we're trying to make things work. And and so the same applies to you know YouTube or TikTok. They're great strategies. It's going to take a while to sort of rev up that engine and get on the road and start traveling. But that requires time and effort and resources. And, mm -hmm. and you have to stay committed to that. It's again, it's kind of like uh, I like to go back to the plant analogy, right? It's like, okay, mm -hmm. great. Here's a fresh brand new plant that if you don't water it every day, it'll die. Right. That leads into a good question from Ralph. He says, how do you gauge the amount of effort or expense, uh, which is too much or not enough when you are, you are eager to make things work for progress? Ooh, man, that's a, uh... That's 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 a good one. Um, it's like, like an existential question there. Yeah, I mean that that like that goes way beyond the scope of this. Uh, <laughs> no, um, mm. you know, okay, I'll I'll be one hundred percent transparent with you. Um, you know, a, as you know, a marketing advertising agency and, and having worked with with other agencies as well. You know. The, the song and dance between agency, for instance, and in, in, in small business is, well, you know, where's the value and how much I'm spending? Like, what am I going to get in return, right? They, mm -hmm. they, you know, small businesses want to see that manifest into like a physical good or a deliverable or a guarantee, right? Like, I, if I'm going to give you 20000 can you guarantee me X, Y, Z? Um, and the, the transparency and honesty that I want to bring to this conversation to answer that question, and, and it's, it's going to be very difficult for, for me to answer that question, is that you'll never know. You don't know. Um, you, you, part of what you're spending, part of what you're purchasing when you're engaging with, whether it's freelance talent or an agency, is their experience is their skill and whether or not they understand you, your business model and the industry at large. And then on top of all that, the relationship and rapport that you want to build amongst yourselves. Cause oftentimes, uh, and, and Dave and I was speaking about this prior, you know, oftentimes people, uh, we call it fast dating or serial dating. It's like, great. Got the sell, got the deal on to the next one. Oh, but I forgot about you already. Right. I'm not going to nurture the relationship. Right. So a lot of that kind of boils down to what is that worth? And, and it goes away from time and materials and tracking time. Cause a lot of agencies like ours are not, do we don't track time? We don't do time and materials. It's more about value-based pricing. So what is that worth it to you? Because if, if you want, you know, hourly, or if you want time and materials, you can offshore that at the bottom dollar and you can get exactly what you want to pay for. So yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, that's a very, very loaded question and I'm not offering a direct answer there, but I am trying to be as open and honest about, you know, what as agencies, how do we engage with you as a small business to have those conversations and what we try to do is scope out the situation. We try to measure the effort that would go into something like that. And then it's just a matter of negotiation. Okay. This is our arbitrary dollar amount that we think is worth our, you know, worth our time and effort. And you'll come back and say, well, you know, what can we do to bring this down? And then we, we negotiate and then we try to make it work. If we can't make it work or if it's just too low, then we'll politely connect you with, you know, some other resources or some other methods to DIY. We're never going to leave you out there to hang. Um, but certainly, you know, part of being a good fit is to see whether or not, you know, what, what we have to bring to the table works for you and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Debbie, hey Debbie, um, she says, I'm a nonprofit leader, a food pantry and other programs. I need to reach volunteers and donors more than clients. We work hard to leverage every dollar to client services. Any thoughts for the nonprofit world? As executive director, I do everything regarding social media, website, fundraising, dot, dot, dot. Oof. Yeah. So I've, I've worked with um, a lot of nonprofits and uh, that's, Really, the difference between one versus another is the mission, right, in the community that you're trying to tap into. But they're all going after donors. That's that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, the depending on what your what was it food pantry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So so reaching communities who are in need. Well, the the audience is reaching communities who are in need of food, right? Right. Right. And then so donors being who, right? So who would be the primary target donors? Um, you know, we, we don't have time to workshop that right now, but if we knew who those individuals were, uh, and if we had an understanding of those personas, then let's figure out where are they hanging out at, right? Let's, let's, uh, let's go to the bars, you know, let's go to the amusement parks. Let's go to, to the, the grocery store, wherever we can meet and greet them. And of course, I'm just being you know, ridiculous with some of those locations there. But mm -hmm. the point being is that once we narrow down, like, Who's our set of personas and individuals we want to go after? Where are they hanging out at? How can we tap into them, you know, through social media or otherwise? Um, if you want to do it, if you want to do it organically, okay, are you saving anything versus paid advertising? If you're doing paid advertising and you want to target those audiences, that can get pretty expensive. True. Um, Arguably, it's just as expensive if you're spending your own time doing that or mm -hmm. if you're paying someone else's time to do that for you, right? So, you know, there's a bit of a, a tug and pull there. I would, though, however, encourage, and I do think that there's a lot of value and benefit in hiring an individual or partnering with an individual to help you grow that organically because that's going to build the community I think that you would be looking for or that you would want and through that community and through those personas, like I said, once we identify those donors and you've earned a couple of donors as influencers, you can hopefully tap into their network. Because chances are, you know, if you found a donor, that donor knows a few other people in their network that could also be donors as well. Did I answer the question or did I just rant too much? No, no, that was good. That was good. Uh, kind of going back to something we were talking about earlier from Larry, he just says, um, he wanted to share that he's had uh, success being a guest on popular podcast, uh, local podcast to spread the word about his coaching practice and building his brand. I guess that's the same thing you know, that you can do with the micro influencers is find podcasts and offer to come on board. If you have something to say, is that a, a good strategy in your mind? Oh yeah. 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 That's a great strategy. Um, and I've done that. Uh, well, I'm, I'm kind of doing that right now, actually. Right. So <laughs> like, right. Yes, uh, you are. So that's what's happening right now before your eyes or before your ears, uh, depending on if you're watching or listening, mm -hmm. um, identifying locally, regionally, or, you know, in your industry abroad, find a person with a smallish podcast or a big podcast. If you're lucky to get on that again, you know, um, depending on how engaged you are with the individual and do whatever you can genuinely, authentically to uh, befriend them and engage with them and see if they'll have you on it. And then and then there's a lot of viewership there, right? That'll that'll get you into a whole new audience that you did not previously uh, uh were able to tap into. Yeah. Yeah. Um here's a kind of a question comment from Zaman and I noticed he said he was from Afghanistan, so that's kind of a <laughs> interesting place to be joining us from, so welcome. He, um, and, and I was talking to somebody yesterday, one of my clients, that uh, they basically said, uh, we just need to get our name out. And uh, when I saw this question, it kind of made me think about that. But he says, um, thank you for sharing the experience and info. Please uh, talk a little bit about strategic planning is important for a small business. And, and uh, that, that kind of, un unless you understand what your strategy is and where you're going, um, just getting your name out there is a total waste of time. Would you agree or not agree with that? Yeah, you know, yes, I, I agree with that. Um, you, you really need to figure out, like, what is it that you want to do with, you know, if if I were to help you gain 100,000, you know, eyeballs right now, right? And, and there's 100,000 opportunities right there to engage with these individuals what are you going to do with that you know um if you went viral tomorrow and, and that's an interesting topic too i had on, on a on a talk with someone the other day is like are you viral ready what happens if you blow up and you go viral your business or your 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 
persona goes uh, viral on on any social media platform what are you going to do with that do you have a strategy mm -hmm. where are you going to drive all that to um how are you going to be able to you know uh, uh you know how are you going to be able to to take full advantage of that moment you know yeah um yeah uh, Phil asks, can you discuss how to reach B2B decision makers on service purchases versus the consumers in general? Well, uh, that's my market. Uh, <laughs> that's all I do all day long is work there B2B. Um, so, um, I, you know, I, I don't know. Um, what, what, what was the individual's name? Phil. Mm -hmm. Phil. Um, so, you know, mm -hmm. Phil, I don't, I don't know, um, you know, what your business is or what your market is, but let me just kind of share with you what we do. Uh, and then maybe you can take that and, and uh, translate it to what you do. So um, as an advertising marketing agency, and we only work with businesses, we want to uh, establish a relationship with businesses um, to find new opportunities uh, out there for ourselves. And so, um, you know, what I do is, you know, I'll go on LinkedIn. I will um, also build sort of a, a matrix of you know, industries that we really want to connect with and companies or brands that we really want to work with. And then I'll use um, certain tools to be able to uh, identify who are the marketing directors for those organizations, who are the C-suite members for those organizations. And I really drill down to, you know, I don't want to talk to the people in the HR department. I don't also necessarily want to talk to the CFO, right? What I really want to talk to is marketing directors and perhaps the CEO uh, and maybe even perhaps the creative director, right? So um, what I do is I target those, those brands, I target those industries, and I really see, do we have a chance at doing something interesting? And more importantly, is this a client that would be willing to let us do something interesting with them, right? Uh, because oftentimes too, again, going back to the, you know, let ideas, you know, breathe and live and, and nurture them. Not all companies or, or teams are set up that way. Uh, so, you know, what you could do is identify, uh, since you're a B2B, identify the businesses that you really want to connect with, follow them on LinkedIn or connect with them on LinkedIn. Um, use tools like uh, Lucia, and there's a few other ones out there, and, and Lucia spelled L-U-S-H-A, um, to you know find out. You you can navigate to say Pepsi or Coca-Cola, and you know you can pull out um, you know a little flyout panel and drill down to see who are the directors there, who are the C-suite members there, and then you can go and follow them on LinkedIn, and then engage with them. You know, engage with them, like their content. Uh, respond and comment uh, to them. You know, don't don't just slide into the DMs, you know, or slide in the email inboxes. Again, that's a bit, you know, uh, um, imagine if, that, if someone did that to you or imagine how many times you deleted an email address that you didn't recognize or a name. Mm -hmm. um, so again, building that, uh, that uh, building up that presence and, and, and letting people, you know, sort of understand and know who you are and what your business is about, I think. I think helps. I hope that I answered that question there, but you know, that's, that's what's worked for us. And we're, we're definitely B2B. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Um, Lori asks, um, when engaging with consumers on social media, is it enough to share our products alone or should we put ourselves as a personal connection out front? I've hesitated, hesitated going live, but I want to grow. <laughs> You know, um, I'm just one person with one opinion on this matter. And, and I say, make it personal. Um, don't just put the products out there. Uh, if you look at, I think it was, maybe it's Tide or um, I want to I want to ask my wife right now and, and see what she has to say, but she would she could remind me. But uh, if you go on Twitter or Facebook, if you go take a look at some you know bigger brands, Okay, look at what they're doing. Some of them are doing some really interesting things. And some of them are kind of also operating as if it's literally 
uh, a single voice and a person kind of sitting there and having fun and cutting up and just having a good old time, right? So if someone maybe sends something snarky across the way, um, you know, what does that response look like back to the individual, right? And there's an opportunity there to, to cut up and engage and have fun, uh, receive the snarky comment and somehow turn it into a positive or make people laugh, you know, um, again, I can't think I, I'm, I'll have to write up a case study on this. There's a few of them out there, but there um, are some viral instances where where, you know, you know, business was able to do that. They take it and they turn a negative into a positive and, and they just create a community out of it all. And then and then people tend to then reshare that going like that. That brand has a personality. They're funny, you know, or or, you know, they make me smile. Or, you know, they make me think or, or they challenge, they challenge, you know, something going on in my community. It, it could be a, a myriad of things um, that goes back to, you know, and, and I'm a firm believer to now more than ever that we're, we're swinging away from the stiffy, stuffy corporate America sort of thing. And that's the, that's the environment I came from. You know, mm -hmm. I worked at Coca-Cola, Apple, um, Apple being a, a little more laxed, you know, than a lot of the other corporations, but, um, but, you know, we're all sort of trained, you know, to be sort of linear and a little robotic and a little formal. And that's not life. That's not how life works. You know, I've got a three-year-old and my daily plans go out the door, like, pff, you know, and you have to learn how to adapt and mold and bend and, and flex in the situations. And I think people expect the same thing out of brands. And I think that, you know, you should welcome that for your business and for your brand. And I think that also that's not only going to benefit you externally from your customers, it's going to benefit you internally with your staff and your team because they're going to feel proud about where they work. And, you know, they're going to they're going to be able to go home and be like, oh, you know, I heard about this in a meeting that, you know, something happened on social and this is how we responded. And you'll never know how that can ripple out, you know, so. Mm -hmm. That was my long-winded uh, answer <laughs> to say yes. Be personal. <laughs> that was good. Um, you know, early in your slides, you were mentioning the the 30-day review to kind of check your R ROI on things. Mm -hmm. um, do Do you have any tips or tools or anything you'd like to share to kind of help somebody make those decisions? Um, because you know, if you're doing a lot of things, there's a lot of data. Is there a way to aggregate things to easily make decisions? Or what do you guys do from a professional standpoint? Yeah. Um, well, to be honest, we we have our team who pulls from the da different uh, data points and we put it into a, a report document. So there's some manual labor involved. We don't uh, we don't pull it all into a dashboard and let the dashboard set and then just give it to someone where it goes untranslated because there's a lot of interpretation and, and translation that has to go into a lot of those numbers. For instance, you know, if someone looks at, you know, a bounce rate, you know, and they see a high bounce rate, you know, that could be a good thing or that could be a bad thing depending on, you know, what the context is. Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing that I think is very important is that um, rather than talking about, you know, the tool, Let's talk about the technique, right? What what are some techniques out there for reviewing every 30 days? And more importantly, you know, partnering with someone internally or externally to help you through that review process because you're not going to have a lot of time to go yeah. through it. And you're going to have a very skewed lens and a very biased lens on some things. And you might be painting the wrong picture for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of tools, um, it really depends, right? Uh, what are we measuring? Are we measuring traditional print? Well, you know, it, that's going to be very difficult. Are you, are you tracking QR codes? Are you at point of sale? Um, are you running a promotional uh, promotional ad? Are you, um, uh, are, are, you know, is it your website? Is it your display ads on Google ads? You know, it just really depends, right? And sometimes you can aggregate that all into one place, whether it's, uh, you know, Google Analytics or some other tool, uh, but at the end of the day, I think that when you're when you're looking at the um, the expanse there, uh, or or sort of the, the the vastness of where you could show up at, um, I think it's again it's it's more important to understand the technique and what does that review process look like more than it is you know looking at data. Gotcha. You know that reminds me that um, you know. 
you mentioned this earlier, but um, you know, when you as a small business owner try to, I don't know, save money and do a lot of this stuff on your own, you're actually short changing yourself because your, your job is really to um, you know, number one, manage the company. And also you're kind of the number one sales guy. Mm -hmm. And if you're, you know, wasting time trying to figure out how to get some traction on Instagram, I mean, you're not doing yourself any favors. Yeah. Uh, I am guilty of that. Um, and, and I'm sure a lot of us are, and uh, we're going through a bit of a, a growth period ourselves. And, you know, I'm having to delegate more and let go of more. And, um, you know, I, I don't hire the people and pay the people and give them benefits and, 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 and do all this uh, to, to tell them what to do uh, or, or to micromanage or, and, and if there's an idea that I have um, or if there's something I think we can improve upon or be better at, um, it's my responsibility to, to go to them and, support them and, 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 and give them that to, to help me figure out uh, for me. And, and I've learned too, and, and this is a bit of a, 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 a I'm going to get on my soapbox and talk about this just for a second, because, you know, when you're small and you're scrappy and, and I've, and I very much identify with being a small business, we're less than a year. We're actually coming up on our one year anniversary here in a couple of weeks, April 1st. And, um, and with no capital, no, no anything just just good old handshakes and building relationships uh it's been a struggle and we're, we're talking seven day weeks 12 hour days and what i've noticed though is that when i'm not as you mentioned david you're you're sort of the the main you know salesperson so to speak um when i found myself being pulled away from that important role of networking and connecting especially working with b2b and, and I'm pulled more into a different direction internally, which I love to get my hands dirty and be in there. But guess what? If, if I abandon my post over here, then going back to the tending to the plants, those plants are wilting and they're not doing good. Right. Mm -hmm. And then what does that do to me? Right. That stresses me out. And then I'm over, overburdened. What does that stress do to my family? What does that stress do to my you know peers? Um, and then, so, to me, I've been finding more ways to, um, you know, find trusted partners, contractors, hire new onboarding individuals. That's the other thing, too, is identifying, you know, can you and I'm speaking more from from a small business, you know, owner standpoint rather than you know, marketing advertising. Um, you have to determine when when is the right time to onboard, you know, uh, a new hire versus when can you contract out if that's, you know, something that you are able to do. Right. Uh, Candace also says something else to piggyback on what we were talking about earlier. Um, different social social media outlets uh, can have different personalities like Instagram doesn't feel like TikTok and can be personal in a different way. What would you tell Candace to, you know, I mean, picking the right outlet, I guess, is super important based on your avatars. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to do this off the cuff, but I'm going to kind of give a personality to each social media. And I think there's a few memes out there that that do this. Mm -hmm. um, so LinkedIn is suits and ties, right? Uh, more formal, um, B2B. Uh, Twitter is... Uh, <laughs> punk rock, you know, <laughs> uh, very, very, um, lots of personality over there. Um, Facebook is, um, I, I would say more family oriented, you know, that's where the whole family is at and that's where you engage with the whole family. Um, Instagram is, um, definitely visual, um, definitely, uh, more product centric, um, in my opinion, and uh, and then TikTok. You know, uh, I've got I've got my own personal opinions on TikTok, um, but I've overcome them because my wife exposed me to it, and I'm totally immersed into it now. Um, it it's unavoidable. T TikTok t is here to stay. It it is it covers so much. You know, it's got the video aspect. It's got. Um, when I say photo aspect, you know, photo through video aspect, mm -hmm. 
uh, the messaging, the personality, uh, the family is on there too. It's kind of like TikTok's a, a little bit of all of them, to be quite honest. And mm -hmm. it's so versatile in their their algorithms and the ways that they are able to to get viewership um, is just incredible. Uh, so definitely look out for that. But uh, yeah, that that's how I would give give personalities to each one of them. And I'd say if you can identify your brand or your services with any of those personalities and where you think that you would hang out more and, and live at. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was, that was really good. Um, I'm getting close to the top of the hour here. So folks, if you have any questions, now's your, your chance to throw them a quick at Chris. Um, um, we were talking earlier about creating experiences through, you know, your messaging and stuff. Could you talk a little bit more about that? And, you know, what would you focus on? What would you tell somebody on how to, you know, create a, an experience that they can push out uh, through social media, let's say? Yeah, so an experience, experience is a loaded word. Uh, it means a lot. Um, and um, you, you ask specifically for social media. Um, you know, it goes back to, first of all, personality. Right. Um, everyone has you know, friends and family members and everyone can identify a particular friend or family member as being the funny one or as being the depressed one or as being, you know, somewhere in between and um, or funny and depressed. Uh, there's some of those. Those are comedians. Um, but, uh, you know, you have to find what your brand's personality is. And based on what that is, um, that's going to help you fill in the voice. And we're not talking about fabricating something or making something up and uh, some sort of uh, um, cheap plastic toy here or, or making up something that doesn't already exist, right? You, there's something that already exists there. And a lot of it as a small business owner or, or even you know, a small team, if, if your business is made up of a small team, there's a personality there. There's something to extract and, and communicate, you know, in a digital world um, that resonates back in, in the real world. Um, people want to interact with that. People want to know who they're interacting with. Um, it, and, you know, that requires um, a lot of engagement, a lot of time, a lot of commitment, a lot of nurturing and really engaging. You cannot let those comments go uh, you know, without a response, you really need to be responding. You really need to be connecting with people always. It's a full time job. And then some, um, the bigger you are, or the more that you grow, it becomes five individuals, full-time jobs. You know, it continues to expand from there. Um, but when it comes to, um, you know, brands in particular, and you'll, you'll sort of see this, you'll, you'll see that there's more engagement with individuals or influencers than there ever are, you know, brands with a logo. Um, because people don't want to interact with a logo. People want to interact with people. And so to reinforce what I said earlier about, um, you know, being personable, uh, have fun, figure out ways to be yourself, to be the brand uh, online and uh and just let loose and you know uh and i think that people it will resonate with people and i think that that would that would definitely uh net you net you a positive experience mm -hmm. um beyond beyond that just to sort of round off the experience topic there um it all has to be connected right um, when you think about when you walk into a retail store uh, like target for instance we've all been into a target um, when you park, right before you even parked, you don't know it yet, but there was an experience because you already saw this, you know, large store and you saw their sign. And then once you parked, um, you know, was the parking lot clean, uh, where, where the carts, you know, all in order, you know, in, in the little cart, uh, uh stowed away. When you walked in, was a cart ready for you? When you went beyond that, are the racks cleaned up? Are the what does that experience look like? All the way to point of sale, right? Um, and and I think that every touch point that 
you know, a, an employee has with the potential buyer, the customer, um, plays into that too, right? And then so we take that for granted, I, th- I think. I think we don't think about all these little micro interactions that happen that play into the experience. And so when I when I talk about experiences, I really mean that. I, I mean, from the time it starts to the time it ends and the hundred things that happen in between, that all plays a role in into the entire experience. Uh, in the digital sense, uh, when it comes to advertising marketing, you know, again, there, there's a wide range of, of things um, as a business that you have to consider, whether it's social, whether it's your site, whether it's uh, point of sale materials, brochures, billboards, uh, bus wraps, y- you name it. Um, there, there's, there's so much there to think about. And it all has to connect and hang together. It, it cannot mm-hmm. be disjointed. It has to make sense. Um, based on what your objectives are and what your strategies are. And um, yeah. <laughs> that was great. Thank you, Chris. Well, we're right at the top of the hour. So Chris, I really want to thank you. This has been so much fun. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I think everybody else did too, but the amount of comments we had. Um, yeah. It's been quite enlightening. I've made a ton of notes and uh, I really appreciated you sharing today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for everyone for asking the questions. A lot of great questions today. And I really appreciate that. Yeah. So feel free to reach out um, with Chris. Uh, There's his website. Go ahead and and jump on there. He's got a great new one. Um, And uh, he's a great resource. Please contact him if you think he can help. So uh, everyone, I really appreciate you guys joining us today as always. And hopefully we'll see you next week um, for another uh, Wednesday webinar. So Thank you much. Bye-bye. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Thank you for joining. At the Kentucky SBDC, we know small businesses are the heart of our economy. That's why our goal is to help business owners start, grow, and succeed in Kentucky. Find out more about how our no-cost business coaching, training, and resources can help your business. Visit us at KentuckySBDC.com.